Hi everyone, let's talk about Magic Maze. And I was first interested in this because I really like the escape games, you know, Curse of the Temple and Zombie City. Really like those, you know, frantic dice rolling games where you know, in the same sense you're trying to reveal uh, the map of either the temple or the city that you're in and try and get out while accomplishing certain things. It's similar in some ways to that, but in other ways, uh, escape is a ridiculously loud, you know, look-filled, uh, you know, just, just chaos. Well, this is chaos as well in certain senses, but escape is, you know, the noisy, crazy uh, game of, uh, of crazy exploration. I say crazy a lot. And this is, it seems very subdued at some, at some points when you're trying to play it, because in a multiplayer game, you're playing in complete silence. And the only thing that you can do is put a special big meeple that comes with the game in front of somebody to say, you know, I want you to do something. You can't actually talk apart from certain small points in the game. Like I think when you, uh, when you flip the timer, if somebody goes to one of those spaces, you can all pause for a second and talk and stop the timer. But as soon as you want to move somebody again and actually do an action, you're going to start the timer again and carry on. And there are certain abilities, like there are loudspeaker symbols across uh, some of the tiles. They will let people speak if you put the green person on those spaces. As I said at the beginning of the playthrough, there are more powers and things that the certain characters get, like the the dwarf can go through little gaps in, uh, you know, little uh, holes in walls that come in later tiles. You know, the tiles add these things that mean that the characters can do more and more. So it's good in the sense that it starts off very simple and then progressively introduces the rest of the elements of the game to you so you can kind of learn as you're playing and it also keeps the game fresh because you are just as you get used to trying to get the people out of these exits now you've got an extra thing now you've got security cameras to worry about now you can reveal extra tiles you know the mage if he's on a certain thing will let you reveal extra tiles the uh, the the barbarian is all about uh, trying to stop those security cameras. The green, as I said, lets you talk if he's on a certain space, and the dwarf can get through areas that everybody else can't get to. And you know, it it really is a a really really fun cooperative game. I showed in the playthrough the two player tiles that are on there. So one person controls the vortex and up and right, and the other person controls the escalators revealing new rooms and going down and left and it's brilliant in the first game where in the first two games so you're going to be these for that for the entire game it was really funny trying to work out what's going on uh, and just the you know the, the desperation in a, in a game where we're in complete silence and we're absolutely desperate to get this flipped and I think it was Rachel's character was right next to the space that you need to be on to flip the timer and she just couldn't notice that we were, you know, seconds away from losing. And I just kept putting the meeple in front of her, you know, do something, do something. And it is terrible when you're in that position of somebody is desperately trying to make you do something and you just can't see what it is. Like I've just been, you know, somebody's been sat on a search space for, you know, minutes and I'm the one with the reveal a new tile icon and I just can't, you know, can't see that that's one thing that I'm missing out on doing. And then you have to waste a, a timer flip to be able to say, you know, come on, you need to sort this out and get us to the next tile. Uh, it's, it's, it's a yeah, really, really tense game. And, you know, made, it's, it's, it's strange keeping this silent in, you know, like, as I said, in Escape, it's all about constant, there is a constant sound of dice clattering everywhere and, you know, everybody frantically saying, I need to get here, I need to get here, come here and help me with this, I need to get these gems, come here, come here, you know, that we, we just heard the timer, we need to get to this room really quickly. It's absolute panic and chaos. And in here, you you have to be absolutely silent, but the same kind of panic is happening just kind of inside everybody. And all you can do is grab that meeple and just keep passing it around because that's that's another thing that you can do. If, if you get given that meeple and you're thinking that somebody else needs to do something so you can do the thing you need to do, you just pass it on to them and it just ends up this weird chain of nobody really knowing what's going on. But in a good sense, hopefully I've come across that I like that about the game. Uh, the solo game as well, as I showed in the playthrough, 
So if you haven't seen that, instead of having tiles each, you end up with this. Every tile is separate, every action is separated onto a tile. You shuffle them up and with one hand, you can reveal them one at a time and do that action for what you want. So you get, you get used to where things are in this stack and, but that's more annoying because usually, you know, you'll, you'll have a move that you're desperate to make and then you know that the search action to find a new tile or the escalator action was completely at the other end of the deck. So you need to cycle through the rest of it so you can flip it back up and then cycle through it again to find that tile that you need. This, uh, this changes things in the multiplayer game as well. So when you go on one of those spaces to refresh the timer, in the solo game, you then shuffle this stack. So everything that you know about where the stuff is in this pile is now irrelevant because we've shuffled it and you're gonna to have to get used to the new order of things before you can try and get your efficiency back up to where it was. In the multiplayer game, uh, this is once you've got to scenario three, I think adds this rule because you don't, you don't put these stickers on the timer until scenario three. But then whenever you flip the timer, great, you get to talk, you're gonna get the time refreshed, all of these great things are happening, but now swap your tiles. And in a, in a game with more players, everything would just go around. But in, in just in a two player game, you get so used to the role that you're playing and what you are looking out for to move everything that when this simple little thing happens and all you're really doing is kind of the opposite of what you were doing before, it completely changes everything and really, really, really messes us up whenever it happens. We've still not gotten used to that little change in it. So yeah, I've really been enjoying Magic Maze. It's, you know, it's it's got a it's got quite a different feel to the escape games for you know the reasons that I've mentioned, but it really does have that feel, even though you have to keep it within yourself when you're playing. That feel of you know, panic and time you know, collapsing in on you. I will say though, I don't know if it's a keeper for us because uh, Rachel, who I play pretty much everything with, really, really didn't enjoy it. And she likes the escape games, uh, doesn't like the fact that she can't roll dice in terms of getting the results she wants and being able to physically roll a lot of dice at once. But yeah, she really didn't enjoy this, really didn't enjoy the not being able to talk and just found it really, really stressful. Uh, the, all of the things that I was thinking are really fun and you know just bringing all this chaos out she just found more and more frustrating and you know wished that she could just you know say a couple of things or you know I don't know what we sorted out but anyway yeah it's not for everybody but what game is I've really enjoyed it and I definitely think it's worth checking out if you like any of these kind of cooperative panic stricken games then I think this is one that is worth looking at so that's Magic Maze. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.